Hello, my science lovers. Today on this episode of Scientist Mel Shorts, we are covering human sexuality. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so this particular episode focuses on human sexuality. So what are we gonna talk about exactly? We're gonna talk about the different types of human sexuality, what exactly influences it, and how does society affect human sexuality? So essentially the breakdowns are this. Sexuality is a spectrum. Its orientation may or may not change over a period of time. Experiences could have an influence on sexuality. Environment could have an influence on sexuality. Childhood can influence it. Genetics and even there's some science that's, that associates fetal development with human sexuality. So what are we talking about when we're talking about this sort of thing? So science essentially has given us all kinds of different information when it comes to human sexuality. Now there are scientists who study human sexuality through various means. They look at genetic influences comparing the expression and changes in the genetic code of people who are gay or straight. Now twin studies provide a little bit of insight as to um, some twin siblings and how they can differ in sexual orientation. Twin studies are important because they allow scientists to study both genetic and environmental or childhood factors to determine what influences sexuality. Now, if sexuality was exclusively genetic, then all monozygotic, aka identical twins, would be of the same orientation. Now, we know this is not the case. Scientists are looking at rearing, but also fetal development in order to find further evidence as to what influences sexuality. Some scientists believe maternal hormones can have an effect on brain development of the fetus, which can influence sexual orientation to gay or straight. Now, some studies have focused on the effect of anxiety and how it appears in early childhood and its influence on sexual orientation. There's some evidence to show that sexuality does run in families, but only siblings with similar genes. Adoptive studies don't suggest a nurture environmental effect on sexuality, but of course more research is important to fully understand this. Now it's important to note that genetic studies may focus on a gene being present, but environmental factors also have an effect on whether or not that gene is expressed. Lincoln studies focus on the presence of the gene and the expression it has on behavior. That is a bit more taxing in the research world. Finding populations who have the gene and whether or not it is actively expressed, i.e. influencing sexuality. Ultimately, sexuality is inborn, can change, but it isn't a choice. There is a lot of research that dives into the straight versus gay world, but nothing yet substantial in the other areas of sexuality. Bisexual, asexual, aromantic, heteroflexible, pansexual. Sexuality is not so cut and dry. So what are these types of sexuality? University of California in Santa Barbara has an excellent website that discusses sexuality, influences on it, societal impact, and educational resources to aid in awareness. I found their graphics and information quite useful, so I'm pulling a lot of this information from that. So let me pop you over to my big monitor here so you can have a look so we can kind of break this down a little bit. So what we're looking at here, sexuality is not binary, yet there are two categories we can use for educational purposes to describe different types of sexuality. You have monosexual and plurisexual. Mono is attracted to one gender. Plurie is attracted to many genders. You can have multiple genders and multiple sexualities. Now, gender identity is something completely different from sexual orientation. I actually have done an episode on that, and you can check it out, gender, genetic sex versus gender. Now, let's talk a little bit more about these particular graphics so we can dive in a bit more with it, with that particular image. Now, when we're talking about androphilic, 
That's the attraction to men or masculinity. Gynephilic is attraction to women or femininity. People can be both. Now, the types of sexuality vary and people can identify with multiple types. Now, as a reminder, gender has nothing to do with sexual preference. So you need to kind of keep that in mind, especially if that's something that you get a little bit confused on. So what are we talking about when we're talking about all the different types of sexuality? Here we go. <laughs> this can be quite complex. So let's just break this down a little bit. All right, so what we have here, we have a person's sex is not, per, uh, is not specified when you're talking about androphilic or gynophilic. Remember, gynophilic are people who are attracted to women. Androphilic are people who are attracted to men. You have ambiphilic where they're attracted to both. Um, you can have bisexual males that are amb ambiphilic. You can have bisexual females that are ambiphilic. You can have intersex people. Um, and intersex, I actually talk about that in genetic sex versus gender. So if that's something you're interested in, you can absolutely check that out on my channel. Um, you can have gynophilic, where you're talking about heterosexual males. And you can have androphilic, where you're talking about heterosexual females. And so it is a spectrum. It's not so easily cut and dry as a lot of people would think. Now, what are the different types of sexuality? Boom, we got a chart right here just for you put <laughs> together. Um, so what do all of these different terms mean? Well, we have aromanticism. That's somebody who's romant is um, without romantic affiliation. You have asexuality, you have bisexuality, you have demisexuality, you have heterosexuality, homosexuality, pansexuality, and queer. Um, so when you're going through all of these different things, we're talking a lot about um, preferences. You can, you can be more than one of these, okay? You can be aromantic and asexual. You can be bisexual, aromantic. Um, you can identify as queer. You can identify as multiple um, versions of this. So pansexual people are people, and that's come up a lot in the news, pansexual people that are attracted to people regardless of gender. Homosexuality are people who are attracted to their same gender. Heterosexuality, opposite genders. Um, and we get to asexual people where they're not attracted. They're not sexual. They don't have any sexual attraction to people. You've got bisexuality where people can be attracted to both. Um, and so it's, it's a multiple type of spectrum, which it's not so <laughs> cut and dry. And I really like the Santa Barbara website because it gets into a lot of these different um, types and it breaks it down really, 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 really well. So if you haven't checked that out, you should absolutely check that out. Let's um, dive into this a little bit further. Now, all of the different types of sexuality, with all these different types, how is it that society continues to impress upon others this binary mentality of male-female-only sexuality? Now, this idea that sex need only be for procreation and nothing else limits the possibilities of human intimacy. So the standard odds of a woman getting pregnant in any given month ranges from 15 to 25 percent. If pregnancy was the only reason to have sex, women would be pregnant more often than not. This also does not discuss the fertility issues that persist within our species where women have to plan, take medication, and modify standard behaviors in order to become pregnant. Sex is not just for procreation. It is a connection between people. There are other benefits of sex that completely are negated by this solely for procreation argument, let alone the small odds that pregnancy can occur in any given month. So let's look at some of the health benefits of sex. There are health, health benefits, guys, didn't you know? So, what are these health benefits? Here we go, boom. <laughs> these health benefits are as follows. A higher immune, immune response, it lowers your blood pressure, improves bladder control for the ladies. It can boost your libido and make you want it a little bit more. It can, it's great for exercise. It can lessen pain, lowers your heart attack risk because you look, get a little bit of cardio in that. It lowers your prostate and cancer risk, stress relief. It can improve your sleep. So all of these things are interconnected with um, sexual interactions. And you know, hey, that ain't so bad. This is actually pretty good stuff. So what else are we gonna talk about? Well, let's talk about society. 
It's time for society to step in, step up and realize that sexuality is not binary. Science is honing in on what forms our sexuality, but society continues to push this archaic idea that sexuality is only for a man and a woman, and that people should be shamed for engaging in sexual activity outside these societal standards. So, Dr. Taylor Bur Burroughs, I actually did an episode of This Week in BS on her, and um, some misogynistic type of um, rhetoric that she's pushing, that women have to be a certain way in order to attract a man, that women have to make themselves look and act a certain way and be more ladylike in order to attract a man. This kind of reinforces the idea that women are here sexually exclusively for men and that we're supposed to do what they want us to do in order for them to like us. This is a problem. And this is a really, really, really big problem that we consistently see, especially in our society, and it, um, it increases and enhances and reinforces rape culture. Women are not here <laughs> exclusively for men for a sexual means, and we've got to kind of alter that perspective. Um, suicide among men, uh, it's suicide is the number one killer of men all over the world, and we have a high rate of that in the LGBTQIA group. Um, and we see men who are gay, bisexual, um, queer, they're taking their lives. Um, and so we've got, we got to step up. Society, come on, man. <laughs> Let's, that's what International Men's Day is, by the way. If you're not familiar with that, International Men's Day is to raise awareness about suicide and mental illness. So don't knock it. So it's time we educate ourselves on the diversity of the world and boost understanding that humanity is a spectrum in just about everything. And that's okay. So what have we talked about today? We have talked about all the things associated with human sexuality. What are the types? What influences sexuality? How does society affect human sexuality? We've covered all of these things in a very, very short period of time. So I'm going to take a moment to thank my patrons. James, Jen, Carl, Melanie, Patrick, Daniel, Stephen, Paula, Carrie, Cersei, Keith, Duke, James, N-A-N-A, -N -A, Nana, Andy, Zachary, Tony, Bo, Stephen, um, Sarah, Chris, Graham, Dragnock, Collis, Iowan, Jennifer, Richard, Doc Fearsome, and Neil. Thank you for helping me do what I do. Um, your support means a lot to me. It helps me keep the lights on, and it helps me up my game, up my content, and it means the world to me. All of my pledges are absolutely, you know, whatever you guys want, let me know. I'm <laughs> happy to get it to you. Where can you find me? Everywhere on the internet. Scientistmail.com, patreon.com slash scientistmail, and Periscope, YouTube, Facebook, and I am on Twitch. Thank you so much for being here. You guys are amazing. Have a fantastic day. Bye.